welcome back to the Shizen Hokoku Zoo here on Planet Zoo in our franchise mode. Welcome back once again, and we are going to be doing another speed build here in regards to our monorail station. If you may recall, we did put down the station originally in our last video where we constructed our palace for our tigers, and a few episodes ago we also constructed our other station for our monorail system. So today we're just going to fix this up and we're actually going to make it so it can be operational in the near future. I will just let you know right now that our track is completely set up so we can start the monorail at any time. However, we have not started that yet. Like I said in last video, if you were here for the last video, I did mention how I wanted this station to kind of climb up a mountain for our people to get into so it makes it feel a lot more natural in regards to like the path that people take and not so much of a man-made path. I think that's probably the best way to say it because our other station just kind of sits on a plot of land and it's just a building with a few gardens around it. But this one is going to feel much different. It's got the same similar building style as the other one to it where I kind of basically do the same roof and the same type of uh, building concept. The biggest thing about this though is how we approach the pathway system and how we approach our garden building and our mountain building right around this area. So to start off with, we do build a path all the way down to our main pathway. So we do have a Q path and a regular exit path. They are on the same side of the building on the opposite side. So you know, the side closest to the mountain. And the main reason why I did this was mainly just to get that really awesome view of our waterfall that we are constructing behind it. So as you can see, we have some placed water. We have, I think, three waterfalls in total that can be somewhat seen, if not fully seen, from the Q path along with the exit path. So this is really a great milestone in our zoo. Just like the last episode that we had, we had the Tiger Palace that we were able to bring into place. Now we can finally finish our monorail system. The only thing that we don't have finished with the whole monorail system overall is a really good viewing area. Now when I say that, mainly from this station to the next station, we do have an issue where there is just nothing nearby for guests to look at. So on the way over to the Gharial Habitat from this station, you see nothing. And that's really a bummer, just because we haven't really gotten anything down over there. We're gonna finish off that second habitat for our crocodiles, which I still intend to do, and I have some ideas about that, so we're gonna get through that at a later date. Now the concept for this pathway is that you're going up the mountain where it's still a little bit rocky, just like it was over near our Tiger Palace, but we start to ease off of that idea just so we have more of a natural flow in between this area in comparison to what the rest of the mountain will be. So this is still more of a sort of sudden drop off area, but it starts to normalize around the slope around this area. But considering where this building is being placed, it's gonna be very rocky underneath this pathway in which we have elevated to enter the station and exit out of the station. So we make it seem like it's a nice wooden platform that people have to climb up on, which kind of makes it feel very woodsy, makes it feel like you're actually in an environment that you really can't walk around. So it's very rocky and it makes it seem like we actually added some pathways so people can transport themselves from one place to another in a more orderly fashion. We also do get some nice railings down. This was just part of the man-made idea, but we wanted to use natural material. Uh, so mostly wood, more organic which I thought was a lot better than using a lot of stone. We already have a lot of stone to this building, so I wanted to mix more wood into the build of this. And once we complete that, we head over to the river over here. I want to make sure we have somewhat of the foreground of the mountain done. Now, obviously this is supposed to be natural. I mentioned that last episode. This is a natural mountain. That we are in franchise mode, so we, don't, we do have to use our own money for this, unfortunately. However, it's more of that natural feel that you want out of this mountain. It's not man-made to any regard, although obviously I'm making it, but the whole purpose is for this to be natural. So I'm trying to make it look as natural as possible. So we do end up adding some more rocks and we always add in rocks toward our waterfall area as I think it makes most sense. I don't know really how else to do it from there, 
But what I wanted to do is make this area a little bit more special. And toward those rocks that I had over near the pathway, we actually make a, a little side waterfall, almost like one of those drip off areas. It's not where most of the water goes, but it's where some of the water goes just to kind of run off down the mountain and end up elsewhere. So we actually put in those special effects for uh, the waterfall to make it seem like it's a little bit more natural to see that it's not just one main river, it's you know a river breaking off from a larger river and just kind of splitting up, merging together at different points because that's how it works in you know nature. So it's just kind of self-explanatory from there, but that was more of the thought process behind that. Now it was really difficult to really figure out what I want to do over near the monorail entrance toward the building. Uh, when I say that more from the palace over into our building there where the monorail line comes through I just really end up throwing in a bunch of rocks. Uh, it's really nothing too too special in this area It's just very rocky But the biggest thing that we do about that area is we're gonna add in some foliage later on to make it seem a little bit more natural It looks very plain and just like a lot of rocks I really want to make it seem natural But you can't make it seem natural when you have rocks literally everywhere and that's all you use so we're gonna add in plenty of foliage later and you'll see that in the near future here. So moving on after that, we end up going over to our cue path. We wanna make sure that we have an idea of how to develop our fencing along with our path and how to make it look like it's an actual cue path and to make it seem like you know people can't just walk off the path and go elsewhere. So we do end up developing some ideas. I was having a little bit of an issue trying to figure out what I wanted to do from here. We end up also bringing over the sign over from the other monorail station, which says Sky Tram. Uh, so this is called Air Sky Tram. We have no other better name right now. Let me uh, comment down below if you have any idea of what to call this Sky Tram. If you want to call it anything interesting, I'd like to see some suggestions. But we end up just throwing in the same sign. I am considering replacing that and adding something else to it because I'm not quite the biggest fan of it. I feel like it's a little dull, so I want to brighten it up a little bit. So we'll end up getting back to that maybe in a future episode because I haven't figured that out. But in terms of our overall natural feel to this area, I wanted to develop it a little bit more to make it seem like we're actually going up a mountain for the most part. So we end up throwing in some rocks just to bring in some sudden elevation from our main pathway over to our cue path, which I think works out pretty well. And I want to make sure we get a fence going along the cue path as well. We actually use this type of fence that I have here and we end up having like three different fence ideas, which I thought was actually really neat. They're all made out of wood, so it's not like there's sudden variations, but it kind of makes sense why there's different types of fencing along the way. And you'll see that as we skip forward here to where we have our second fence design, which is just a shorter version of the other fence that I had. Then we add in a third fence design, which is adding in some thick wooden beams throughout the process. We end up doing this right in the middle for the most part. This is where I started off this idea, is because we got the pathways very close to each other and I wanted a better way to divide these areas. So that's what we end up doing here. We end up throwing in a bunch of pieces of like thick timber and we were able to throw it right in the middle there, which I thought worked out really nice for this design. And it made it look very imperfect, which was also like a really neat concept to this idea because the pathways don't look perfect. And I thought that just really brought something special out in this area because we don't want cookie cutter designs throughout our park. And I thought this worked out very well in our end result. Moving forward from there, we end up coming back over to the rock wall here. I wanted to clean it up a little bit more because I feel like we're developing this area a little bit better and it helped just kind of fix up my brain a little bit to make sure I kind of kept focus on certain elements. Uh, so we came back over here and we threw in some nice wood trimming uh, in order to kind of complete the main pathway a little bit. And instead of adding a fence, which I thought would be a little bit too much fence, we end up throwing in a little wood trim, which we end up filling up with some nice foliage afterwards. I did consider using a little bit of uh, temperate foliage, but I decided I'd take that away from this area because I didn't feel like it fit since we're in more of a natural uh, mountain environment that we're starting to develop. So I wanted to stick with a lot more of the natural uh, tropical foliage in Asia, which we ended up throwing in here. Plus I felt like we were getting a little bit too dull and we need to add a little bit more green and color into this build. 
So I felt like this was the best route to go from here. We are gonna finish up the fencing, but I need to take a break from that and just kind of develop the idea a little bit more. So we end up throwing in some bamboo right across the way near our building there, which ends up just kind of covering up the building a little bit, kind of just makes it so that, you know, you can't see huge buildings in the distance that you know, are just kind of more operational more than anything. Since this building is themed, it can be seen from the distance, but I wanted to make sure places like our Japanese Tiger Palace was a little bit more seen than our monorail station on the mountain, because I feel like that's very important for the design of our zoo. Not to mention we need to flush up the area in between the monorail station and our Japanese Tiger Palace, so we end up throwing in plenty of more plants in that area as well. And just a little bit of a heads up, uh, you may have seen it a few times, I ended up building a little staff bridge over toward the end of the waterfall, over toward the crocodile habitat. And I want to build that second habitat like I mentioned before. Just a little bit of a heads up that I do plan on making a second habitat, which I think I did mention in that saltwater crocodile habitat speed build video as well. We do have an idea going on for that, so uh, I am trying to stick with this area a little bit, but I started to blend over a little bit and edit that area as well. I do go back and forth a few different times on deciding what kind of plants I want in certain areas. It was a little bit difficult because there's a lot of green plants when it comes to uh, tropical East Asia, and it's just a little bit difficult when you got so many green plants and you're trying to add in a little bit of color, but you're not getting in the color you want. But I'm trying to deal with it a little bit better, so we have a variation of plants that are green and kind of grow differently to make it seem a little bit more natural. And there's a lot of those purple flowers and we don't really have any other types of colors for tropical flowers and, or tropical plants in general, I should say, in Asia. So it is a little bit of a challenge when it comes to that, which is why I've considered using some temperate plants. Uh, but we try to stick away from that as we try to keep it for some of our specific habitats and other areas. Like I did say, this is more of a natural climb up to a mountain. So I wanted to stick with the theme a little bit more. Furthermore, we do come back over to this sign that says Sky Tram. Once again, I want to change the sign. Uh, so that is another thing that I want to deal with. But I was kind of developing this idea since we have a lot of wood. I wanted to add some stone here and possibly add in some mulch. However, we don't finish this area because I'm not sure if this is the right direction I want to go from here. So we end up adding in the stone and I was thinking about closing off this area and adding in some lighting to kind of fix it up a little bit. However, I didn't feel like it was the best way to go. Plus, I think I forgot to mention this. We do have this solar panel here. I needed to add it there because we do have a little bit of a power outage when it comes to the station along with most of the pathways where we are going to add in some lighting here in a few moments. So we need to add this in and I wanted to add in a solar panel somewhere, but it kind of becomes a little bit useless in terms of look because it's covered by so many trees on the mountain so let me know what you guys think about that situation I may remove it add in a generator somewhere else so that is something that we'll try to look over in the future now we do kind of come to a close over here I end up finishing a lot of the pathway we end up bringing these timber logs down our exit path as well because I want to separate it from a lot of the foliage that we have over here instead of adding in just that basic fence that we had on the other side. So we do continue that all the way down the Japanese Tiger Palace as well. It looks very imperfect and it looks great. I think it looks fantastic for the pathway. Very simple, plain, basic look. That probably costs a lot of money in wood supply though, uh, just in general. But we have that money, thank goodness. And then we do change out a few of the trees and a few little different areas of what we have over there for foliage and stuff like that. But we also have to add in our lighting. So we end up throwing in some basic lights onto our timber logs. I was considering using some of the New World little lights, but I decided to stick away from that and stick with some of the basic lighting that just kind of sits in walls and just kind of is more functional more than anything. But since they're so small, we end up just hiding them in there anyway. Then we add in some nice themed lighting as well and we just sink it right into the poles of our fences which looks fantastic as well. We don't continue it everywhere we just continue it on the main part there where we have our fencing because it is a little bit less of our operational side 
and we don't continue it throughout the whole entire thing. So I feel like it gives it a nice little charm, but it's not continued all the way up there, so it may look a little bit strange in general. Uh, not sure what to think of it yet, to be completely honest with you. I wanted to fix up a little bit more where those palm trees are toward the little exit area of our tram, but we end up just throwing in a, basically a rock there just to make it seem like there's something more there. Uh, didn't really know what else to do with that, to be completely honest. And we do a little bit of touch up elsewhere near the little waterfall and the river there to make it seem like there's a lot more going on. We end up throwing in some dead roots around the area as well. I just kind of place them around in random areas just to make it seem like that there's a little bit more going on than just a bunch of stuff that's alive. So we want to make sure that this area looks a little bit dead too because dead plants also are very useful for little insects and creatures that like to feed off of dead plant matter as well. And then as you can tell, I come back over here and I kind of fix up some areas that I thought needed fixing. And we end up adding just some larger foliage as well to make it seem like there is a lot more to this area than what was thought out to be. So that's more of the more natural element to this. And it's not so much, oh, we put this here. It's more like this has been here for 500 years and we're just gonna leave it there, which I thought worked out really nice to be completely honest with you. But other than that, there's really nothing else that we do with this area. I'm really happy that we do finish off this station. Let me know what you guys want to see next in the comments down below, any suggestions, anything like that. I like to hear from you guys. Give me a thumbs up if you would like to help support the channel. I would highly appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And just one last thank you to our patrons. And if you would like to become a patron today, link is in the description below. Other than that, join our Discord, and I shall see you guys in the next episode. See you later.